Right. Okay. So, uh, you know, worshiping hope, he fills us with hope. And we also see in 1 Corinthians 12 that he places us, you know, baptizes us in the spiritual body of Christ. Right? The Holy Spirit does that. And, um, and how do we receive the work of the Spirit? How do we experience the work of the Holy Spirit? Uh, we see it is by faith. Right? In, in, in Galatians, uh, Paul actually rebukes the Galatian church. Right? He reprimands them because they begin to do something, you know, uh, uh, they begin to carry out their ministry and they begin to get into a cycle of doing things on works. Right? So uh, in Galatians, Paul is actually having some strong words. You know, if you read through, he sees, you know, he says things like, oh, foolish Galatians, right? So let's uh, look at, um, uh, you know, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 2. Galatians 3 verse 2. Uh, in 3 verse 1, he says, Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth, etc. Verse 2, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Okay. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Verse 5, Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Okay, so he's talking about, uh, and then again in verse 14, the same thing, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay, so um, we receive the promise, the gift, um, the working of the Holy Spirit, it is not by works. Okay, it is not like, okay, I do these three things and then the Holy Spirit will move. Uh, now, you know, I, now I'm going to increase the volume and then the Holy Spirit will do, no? He does that, I will increase the volume. If I sing these songs, the Holy Spirit will move. Uh, you know, we have all those things. You know, if I sing it in this way, if I play that, uh, what are those? <laughs> Excuse me, uh, you know that pads and that keys. You know that's the Holy Spirit song. You know that that tone. Yeah, Holy Spirit will just fill. It. It's not that. These are just works, right? You don't need me to have any music, actually, right? And it's the, it's by faith, right? We res we receive, we respond, and we uh, out of our hunger, you know, we reach out in faith, and He does the works. We receive by faith. Okay, so um, uh, but I just want you to hear me clear. You know, hear me out in the sense that not against music or anything. You know, music definitely enhances our worship. Uh, definitely is an expression of our worship, right? And we see right through Scripture and the Psalms. You know, play skillfully, Psalm thirty-three, three, and all that. So it's definitely an integral part. And you know, there is that connection between. Uh, anointing and music, the prophetic and music, there is, but it is not like, you know, I put on these switches and then I have the lights, you know, it's not that way, right? So there is definitely a connection. Um, so and I do believe that. Um, so, uh, you know, that's the thing, right? Okay, so let's uh, look at uh, one more, um, just one thing, sorry. Okay, so so he has some very strong words. Um, verse 5, he who supplies the Spirit and works miracles among you. So, you know, the gifts of the Spirit, the miracles, you know, which God brings about, it is by faith. These are not works. And uh, sometimes it's, um, you know, sometimes we, we make the mistake of thinking that, okay, um, you know, I, I need to do these things in order to, for the Spirit of God to move, right? You know, these are good things. Like, for example, you know, we, we, we say, like, okay, I need to fast for so many days. I need to read so many chapters. I need to, you know, spend time this many hours. Now, these are all good things. These are all our disciplines, right? We, and, 
and we need to. But the thing is, in our understanding, we are saying, if I do this, then that will result in the work of the Spirit. You know, now, spending time in the Word builds our faith. Right? When we spend time in prayer, you know, it builds our intimacy, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. All this is important. But, you know, the fine line is, um, you know, because I'm doing this, then, you know, the Spirit of God will move. No, that's not true. The, the Galatians were saying that we, they were going back to the law. They're saying, okay, you need to be, you know, I'm saved, but I need to be circumcised. I need to keep the law. I need to keep those ritual things uh, in order for God to move. Right? They had actually got into that kind of a thing. So in our day and time, we could believe certain things. or These, these kind of things can creep into our lives, right? And uh, and when we say, okay, uh, these gifts I will have only when if I, you know, if I do these things, and it becomes a work by itself rather than by faith, rather than uh, you know a work coming from a place of friendship, intimacy, relationship with God. Okay, so that's that's very important that the work of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, the move of the Spirit, comes from. Uh, our relating to God by faith, okay, and it's not by works, okay, okay. Um, what else? Um, he strengthens our inner man. Okay, I, I'm just skipping a few things. You can go through it. Um, Ephesians three and verse sixteen. Okay, let's look at Ephesians three verse sixteen. Okay, uh, it says. That he would grant you, this is one of the prayers that Paul prays okay, for the efficient church, and this is what he prays, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Okay. So what does that mean, to be strengthened in the inner man? Anyone? Strengthened with might. Through his spirit in the inner man. Paul is praying that. Um, what does that mean? What does that result in? Anyone? Sorry? We become sensitive to his voice. Okay. What does the inner man refer to? Sorry, spiritual? Yeah, your spiritual life. Uh, the, the the term inner man refers to your spirit. We are born again, new creation spirit. Right? We are spirit, soul, and body. So the inner man, inner person, refers to uh, spirit. Okay. Uh, see some response here. God anoints us with spirit. Okay. Yeah. That is true. But the term inner man refers to uh, our inner person, you know, we, uh, a spirit, soul, and body, so our spirit. So what is Paul praying? Paul is praying that you might be strengthened with might. That I pray that God would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might. Strengthened with might. Through his spirit in the in a man. Okay, so he's not talking about physical strength. He's not talking about physical ability, but he's talking about something even deeper, which is really valuable, right? To have a strong spiritual life. And he's saying you will be strong in the spirit. Okay, so that your spirit will not be feeble, but it'll be strong. Okay. So how does the spirit your spirit become strong? Okay, Holy Spirit does that. That's the word. So, so, praying in tongues, you get edified. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 14, I think in verse 4, right, talks about he prays in a tongue, edifies himself. There's a building up, right? There is, uh, it's like, it's like working out spiritually. You know, you know that you work out, you exercise. And that results in growth, uh, you know, strength, physically. It's like a spiritual workout, right? When we pray in the spirit. How else? 
relationship with god so okay, can you just explain that go deeper specific mm. Mm. Okay, okay. So you walk with God, you time with God, uh, things change, priorities change, choices change, okay, right? Okay. So I uh, just want us to consider this, you know, the words of the Lord Jesus. What did he say? Um, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word, the word used there, rema, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Okay. So what does the word of God result in for a new creation person, you know, new believer or, or a, a, you know, for a believer? There's something that happens to the spirit man. Because the Lord is saying that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Every time you receive Rema from God, something happens to your spirit. It's not just an emotional thing. No, it's not just, okay, I have peace of mind or I have, uh, you know, things are clearer now. I'm somehow at peace. You know, all these things happen, but it's an overflow of something deeper that's happening when we receive the Rema word of God. Something happens to our spirit, right? We are being strengthened. You know, uh, Romans 10 talks about that, that faith comes by hearing. You know, when we, when we receive, when we receive the word of God, faith arises. And faith is something spiritual that happens. The faith is not psyching ourselves. Faith is not just coming, making a decision. But something happens in the spirit. Right? Faith can come only by the word of God. Okay, the word of God produces something in us spiritually, in our spirit, and that is faith. Right? So Paul is saying, you know, in all these ways, you know, may the Holy Spirit strengthen you in the inner man. When you're strong in the inner man, right, nothing can shake you. When you're strong in the inner man, right? And sometimes what happens is like we you know, we, we are weak spiritually and we don't have the capacity to uh, receive from God. You know, we don't have the capacity to spend time in His presence. We don't have the, that hunger level to pursue God. We don't have that capacity to, you know, just uh, read the Word and spend time. You know, all that capacity is not there. But as we grow spiritually, right, there is an expansion that happens. There's something that happens deep within and we are able to receive uh, the things of the Spirit. Okay. The secret of Jesus' life was the constant abiding fellowship with the Father. It fortifies the inner man, absolutely. So that intimacy, uh, I think what Rinchen was talking about, the intimacy, that walking with the Father, the relationship with the Father. Yeah, that friendship. So out of that, you know, intimacy and the presence of God uh, and the revelation from the Father, uh, you know, there's something that happens to the inner man, right? So Paul is saying, you know, this, you need this. And I'm praying that you receive this. And this is a work of the Holy Spirit, that you are strong in the inner man. Okay. And then you, you are surprised. Where did that strength come from? You know, I'm facing these problems, but strangely, I'm strong enough in the inner person. Where did that come from? That came because you were edified by the Holy Spirit in the inner man. Okay. So this is a great prayer to pray uh, you know, over ourselves and over the church, uh, over other believers. You know, there's some prayers like this that Paul actually prays. Um, you know, Ephesians one is something that you know we see. Um, uh, Ephesians one and verse fifteen. After I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I uh, do not cease to give thanks to you and making mention of you in my prayers. And this is what he prays, verse 17, like that the God of our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that your eyes of your understanding being enlightened, and so on. Right? Similarly, 3.16 is also 
a prayer that he prays to be strengthened with uh, with might through his spirit in the in a man okay and uh, and we see you know Ephesians chapter 6 be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might right that's what he starts with before talking about the armor of God be strong in the Lord you know it, it uh, what does it mean have you thought about it be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might yeah what does it mean like do I does it mean to be strong in faith? Does it mean to be just quoting scripture? <laughs> uh, what does it mean? Right? Does it mean to be more passionate? When you look at that, that word, there be strong in the Lord and the power of his, there's some there's some amazing words used there. Okay, so you just go back and check. Okay. Be strong in the Lord. I, I'm talking about Ephesians chapter 6 and um, verse 10. So you can do that. Just look at those words, strong, power, might. Right? These are all powerful words that he uses there. Um, but just one thing is when he's talking about the powerful, supernatural, creative, uh, miraculous power of God. When he says and the power of his might. So he's saying you be strong in that. Right? And the same prayer that he's praying. In, in verse 16, 3 verse 16, to be strengthened with might. So he's talking about something, another dimension altogether. Right? Yeah, it's 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 about being compassionate, being more Christ-like, and all that is there, you know, being um, uh, something that changes our character, being transformed in our character, definitely. But He's also talking about something, you know, another realm altogether, a supernatural realm. And he's saying, be strong in that. You be strong in that. Strengthened with might through the Holy Spirit. Right? So you find out, okay? So um, chapter 6, verse 10, just find out those three words, power, might, um, uh, and uh, what is the other word? Strong, yeah. Okay, okay. Let's move on. Okay. Um, another thing that we see is that um, the Holy Spirit brings about something that is so necessary for the body of Christ. Okay. You you just need two people to have differing opinions. Okay. Two people get together. Why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? I put three more people, three opinions. You put a class like this, <laughs> you know, you have all these kinds of ideas because all of us are different. We are unique. Right? And with all our sharp differences and likes and dislikes, there's something that the Holy Spirit brings about, um, which is the unity of the brethren. Right? Uh, Ephesians, um, Ephesians 4 and verse 3 um, says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace so he says i therefore the prisoner of the lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called with all lowliness and gentleness with long suffering bearing with one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace so he's saying you know the spirit of god brings about that unity but you endeavor to keep that unity in the bond of peace okay so uh, unity is something that's really required for the body of Christ okay and uh, and the Corinthian church had that problem they were not united they were different I mean they were uh, divided they were exalting one person they were they had different kinds of groups so you know Paul has faced that he'd seen that and here he's talking about endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Okay, so um, th th that's again something to pray and ask the Holy Spirit, Lord. We're all so different, but God, you bring us, give us that oneness of heart and oneness of mind. Right? In seeking, you know, it's it's not sameness. You know, it's not saying that okay, uh, everybody likes, you know, dal and rice. Okay, it's not saying that okay, chapati is the everybody should. Saying, oh, wow, wonderful, chapati is wonderful. It's not that. 
right? Uh, that is not unity. That's not uniform. That's uniformity and sameness, right? But with all our differences, to bring them out, you where it matters when it comes to the Lord, when it comes to worshiping Him, when it comes to believing in Him, when it comes to seeking Him, and all that. That unity of the Spirit. Okay, so he's talking about that. Okay, let's look at one more, um, a few more things, right? Uh, before we move on. Okay, Second um, Timothy chapter one and verse fourteen. Second Timothy chapter one, verse fourteen, it says, "Hold fast." Let me read verse thirteen. Hold fast the pattern of sound words. Okay, Second Timothy chapter one, verses thirteen and fourteen. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Okay, So that good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so what was committed? So who is, who is Paul writing to this epistle? To Timothy. And who was Timothy? <laughs> Sorry? Who is Timothy? Yeah, is someone who is who he discipled, mentored, right? And at that point of writing, Timothy was actually in Ephesus, pastoring a church, leading a church there, right? Uh, and so uh, in this episode, he gives a lot of encouragement, he gives a lot of instructions, um, you know, as a person who's uh, uh, who's actually there. So, you know, if you if you look at uh, Chapter one, he says, you know, stir up the gift of God which is in you um, through the laying on of my hands. And uh, he's saying, you know, Timothy, you need to use these gifts. Right? Don't be fearful. Don't be afraid. Because in verse seven, he says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And in the same thing, he just goes to give some more instructions. And he says, that good thing which was committed to you. So he doesn't specify what, but obviously, it talks about the gifts. It talks about the gifts. It talks about the call that Timothy has. It talks about the faith that Timothy has. You know, um, if you look at, um, let's look at First Timothy. Okay. Um, First Timothy. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, Just one second. Um, strong the grace. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, if you look at uh, First Timothy, uh, verse eighteen, chapter one, verse eighteen. Okay. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare okay so there were some things that were spoken over him there were some prophecies that were made over him and uh, he says you know th this these are some things that you receive okay then we read about um, uh, we, we, we read about how uh, if you go to chapter 4 first Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14 okay do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. So they, they had actually prophesied over him. Um, they had laid hands, all the leaders, all the elders, and prayed over him probably before he moved on to this place. They did that. Okay, So he says that uh, don't neglect the gift that is in you. Okay, um, And then he gives uh, some more uh, instructions there. Then we come to chapter, uh, sorry, Second Timothy chapter one. There also he says, "I remind you to stir up the gifts that are in you." Then, in, in uh, verse fourteen, he says, "That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit." So there were a lot of things that there was there was deposited in Timothy. He had received a lot of things. Okay, and he says, "You keep by the." Holy Spirit. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that that's the danger of losing. Um, 
Okay, I just see a comment here. Giving utmost priority to keeping the spirit man in top condition. Yeah, uh, about being strong in the spirit, I guess. And, you know, the education and strengthening of the inner man determines the effectiveness in God's kingdom. And uh, and in what matters. Yeah, very nicely put. Our testimony in all areas. Yeah, that's wonderful. Right. So, so he's saying you what was committed. So the thing is, there's a great danger in actually losing out what we have received, right? Um, revelation, understanding of God, faith, right? Uh, there's a, God has given us all this. He's put all this, right? Maybe the call, the vision, the purpose, everything, right? And it's it's nice and strong and bright and clear, but there is a danger of losing that. Okay. I'm not talking about gifts, you know. The gifts, of course, it's by faith, and uh, you know the, the gifts and call of God are without recompense, which means that He doesn't withdraw it from us. But the thing is that we, if we neglect, there is a chance that we don't really walk in it. You know, we're not really keeping it. We're not really guarding it. Right. Um, so Paul is saying, you know, by the Holy Spirit you actually keep it. You get to keep it, you get to guard it, you get to use it. Okay. Um, you know, there, there was a time in my life when I was living a very dual life, okay, before coming into ministry, um, right? Um, where Monday to Saturday, I was a very different believer. <laughs> Sunday, I was a different believer. Okay, so I, I, I used to work, uh, I travel on work and go to different places and all that. So I was a, a very carnal believer. Okay, so uh, God had to clean my whole thing up, clean my system, clean my life. But the thing is this: what I realized was that whatever God had, you know, put in me, okay, the call, the purpose, the plans, and and you know some of these revelations, I realized that because I was living a carnal life. Right? I, I felt that these things were not strong. I was losing a grip on them. Right? These things were just kind of disappearing. You know, I was not walking in the reality of that. And, uh, you know, you know, and, 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 the, and the things that I was strong in, when it comes to faith, you know, I felt that fear crept into those very areas. Right? Now, thinking about it, you know, how did that happen? Because I did not keep them meaning guard them, protect them, nurture them, because I had opened my opened the doors, you know, to to really for the enemy to bring in doubt, bring in confusion, uh, bring in a whole lot of things. And here he's saying you need to keep by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that involves us, involves us depending on God, depending on the Holy Spirit, right? So you hold on to those things. There's a requirement that our whole, you know, something precious has been deposited in us. The prophecies, the call, the gifts has been deposited in us, right? So you need to take a hold of it. And you need to take a hold of it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, right. The Holy Spirit also helps us to, uh, you know, other things like uh, obey the truth, endure persecution. Um, and there's a danger in despising the Holy Spirit, right? Hebrews 6, Hebrews 10. Talks about that. Okay. Um, okay. Do we have time? Okay. So let's let's move on to another topic, which is being led by the Spirit. You know, for the believer, you know, this is something very very precious that, you know, which is actually our inheritance. Right. As believers, we are led by the Spirit of God. We are privileged to be led by the Spirit of God. Right. That God wants to lead us. You know, when we say shepherd. Um, you know, uh, the Lord Jesus says that He is the good shepherd, and all that the shepherd does, you know, lead the sheep, nurture, and all that, uh, uh, you know, comes under that purview. Like He's the good shepherd. Right? So we see that as believers, we are privileged to be led by Him. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Leading, you know, uh, if if God is leading us, it means that I need to follow only then can can i say okay he's leading me right if i'm not following then 
there is no question of him leading. Right? If I'm following, then I can say, yeah, he's he's leading me, which means I'm trusting, I'm obeying, um, you know, whatever he's asking me to do. Okay, so let's look at Romans eight. Okay, Romans eight. This is a privilege of the born again believer. Romans eight fourteen. Okay, um, it says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, or children of God, daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and so on. Right. So you see here <coughs> that we are privileged to be led by the Holy Spirit okay? in all areas where we need leading. Do we need leading? Do we need his wisdom? Do we need his you know, help? Yes. And we are privileged to be led by him. You know, I remember once, um, uh, this was actually in 10 standard. You know, I uh, uh, finished the thing and then I was, I, was, uh, I, I was just thinking, okay, what course should I take? Like, should I take uh, arts, commerce? Should I take... Uh, you know, Max Physics, Chemistry, Biology, to Science, should I take Computer Science? And, um, and I remember you know, asking my, I asked my father, what do you think I should take? My father said, no, whatever you want to take, you take. Okay. So it, I, in that sense, I, I appreciate he gave that open openness, but I really, uh, I really miss that instruction, you know, uh, that weighing of pros and cons and, and saying, okay, uh, maybe you should do this. What are you interested in? So I just... I just carried that for a long time, you know. I wish he had given me that, you know. I wish he had given me that instruction, that wisdom. You know, if you take this, you'll do this. If you take this, so he just said, whatever, whatever you want, you do. You know, you you pick you pick something, you do it. So uh, I just miss that leading, you know. But the fact is this: the Holy Spirit, when we ask Him, He leads us. But for us to respond to His leading. We need two things, relationship and intimacy. Okay, we need to know. I need to know the voice. I, I can't just live with a formula, like saying, okay, God does this, 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 and this is how, okay, therefore, you know, you can't say, okay, if I see one auto go at this time, then I know that's the sign, Lord. <laughs> You're calling me to become an auto driver, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, Sometimes we do that, right? Uh, for various things. God, if this happens, it's like uh, we say, okay, how do we justify it? Okay, Gideon put out that fleece. Hmm? Gideon did that. So God, I'm also going to do. Yeah, there are times when we, you know, we do that. You know, we said, step of faith, God, I'm so confused. I'm... But the fact is this, Gideon did not have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Yes or no? What do you think? Yeah. You know, this was in the old dispensation, and now all of us, we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And he says that hey, as a son and daughter of God, you have the privilege of being led by him. Okay, And that leading comes out of relationship. That leading comes out of being sensitive. That leading comes out of being, you know, us saying, I'm ready to follow. Why should he lead us when you, every time he leads, you step out in the whole, you know, in, in your own direction? Okay. Have you, have you uh, done that? You know, um, maybe you, uh, someone comes and asks you directions. Okay. Which way to go to the railway station? Which way to go there? And then you take time to explain, okay, you go there, take the right, take the thing. And then they're not following the instruction. Has it happened to you? They just go in some other direction. They ask you, you took the time you to give them the direction, okay, you go here, and then they, they just took some other direction and went. How will you feel? And then suppose that person comes again the next day and says, you know, how, which way do I go? You feel like talking, <laughs> you feel like telling them directions, you know, you, you begin to doubt, you know, is he going to carry out the instruction or not? Okay. But God, the, the good thing with him is that he is patient. Right. He still honors that, okay, my child, you know, I, I'll give you the directions, but this time you follow. You know, this leading has benefit if you follow. Like 
But the thing is, is that the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, leads us. Just because, you know, you, you see that, right? Um, 814, it says that as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? So, which means that we are part of His family. That means there is relationship. You know, that's what it means, right? When you say son, you know, or daughter, you know, you're a family. There is relationship and there is leading. Okay? Right. And then... Um, yeah, uh, conscience bearing witness with the Holy Spirit. Um, we see that in uh, the next chapter. Uh, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. So God puts a stamp of approval, and uh, you know there's a, there is a oneness, there is an agreement uh, that happens. Uh, your own conscience and the Holy Spirit bearing witness to that. Okay, okay. So now, how do I test? You know, this whole thing of leading of being led by the Holy Spirit. You know, how do I test what is of the Spirit or what is not of the Spirit? Okay, that's a question, you know, that comes up. Okay, I, I feel that, okay, God is leading me to do this, but then how do I know that it's God? How do I, how do I know that it's not just my own desire? How do I know that it's not, you know, my own imagination? All of us have questions, right? Uh, I don't want to make a mistake. This is a big thing in my life, and I'm asking God for the, you know, for the leading. And uh, here is the promise that if I'm, you know, uh, for the sons and daughters of God, there is this privilege of being led. So, but I don't want to make a mistake, right? So the thing is, how do I test? Okay, let's look at three things. Okay, firstly, the leading or the instruction by the Spirit of God does not contradict the word of God. Okay, let's look at 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7. Okay, 1 John chapter 5 verse 7. Um, okay, maybe someone can read, you guys, if you're there already. Yeah. Sorry? Hmm. Yeah, so these three are one, right? And um, so if you look at verse 8, there are three that bear witness on the earth, the spirit, the water, the blood, and these three agree as one. And um, and the thing is this, that there is agreement between the Holy Spirit, the, the Word, the Father, verse 7, right? So there is this agreement. So, so God would not ask you to do something which is totally opposite or deviates from his instruction in the word. Okay, so he will not ask you to go uh, do some harm to someone and he says, okay, some good will come out, out of it. It contradicts his word, right? So he will not ask you to go, okay, go rob the bank and then give it to the poor. You know, that's not, that's not from God. Okay. Uh, okay, you may say, okay, God, you know, it's, it's a good thing. I'm giving to the poor, you know, just an extreme example, right? I'm giving to the poor and, uh, you know, it's a, I'm doing a good work. I'm not keeping it to, for myself. I'm giving a one-tenth of it to the church, right? But the thing is, you know, that whole act of robbing from someone which is not rightfully yours, taking from someone which is not rightfully yours, now that contradicts the Word of God. So we see that the Word of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit will agree. Okay, that's a basic, very basic thing. Then, secondly, is the Lord Jesus glorified in this? Is God glorified? Is the Lord glorified? You know, uh, John 16 and verse 13, the Lord's teaching on the Holy Spirit, he said that the Holy Spirit will actually exalt Jesus, will exalt the Son, will lift up the Son. Right? Um, John 16, verse 13. Okay. Um, However, when he, the spirit of truth, and has come, he will guide you into all truth. Okay, uh, For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare to you. He will take of what is mine and declare to you. He will glorify me. Okay, So the Lord Jesus will be lifted up, will be glorified. Okay, so you can know for sure that, yes, 
if Jesus is not glorified, then yeah, then we need to doubt that, right? And also, you know, he will not lead us in unrighteousness. Again, similar to what we looked at the first time, you know, like spirit and the word will agree. He will not lead us in unrighteousness. You know, look at Psalm 23. Um, Psalm 23. Okay, uh, verse 3. Okay, let's look at verse 2. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. So he's leading, right? He restores my soul, verse 3. He leads me in the paths of righteousness okay, for his name's sake. Okay. So he is the righteous one. That's his character. The, if, you, if you want to look at the Holy Spirit, his, he is the, the Holy Spirit. So that's his nature. That's his character. So he will not lead us in paths of unrighteousness or unholiness. Right? He will lead us in paths of righteousness. Okay. So that's very clear. So, so, so these are some very broad categories or tests we can say that, okay, am I being led by the Spirit of God? And obviously there is more to it, you know. So the thing is like, what if there are three different things and I feel that, okay, all three are good, right? It's, all three are good, but I want to know the leading of God. It's, it's, it's not like it's contradicting the word. It's, it's definitely scriptural. It's biblical. It's nothing unrighteous, so, but I need to know. What is, you know, that's a difficult thing, right? It's all good. All these three things are good, but then, God, where are you leading? Okay. So uh, we're going to look at uh, that uh, in the next class. Okay. Hearing from the Holy Spirit. Uh, and uh, we see, you know, we're going to, because that going to take some time. So uh, we're going to look at that, you know, how we are made spirit, soul, and body, and how we receive information from in our, in our body to touch, hearing, and all that. And how that influences us. Okay, and we'll, we're also going to spend time, some time, maybe praying and hearing from God. Uh, but we'll do that in the next class. Okay, so um, I guess we'll stop here for today, um, and we're just going to take some time to pray. Right? Let's uh, let's take some time to pray. You know, pray in the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Pray in tongues, and based on what we started off, you know, like asking, seeking, knocking, right? And maybe there are things that we need to keep by the Holy Spirit. And maybe we are saying, God, I'm, I'm feeling so we feeble, God. I need to be strong in the inner man. So we can just pray and, and say, God, you strengthen me. God, I, I maybe we need understanding, revelation from the word of God. And we can say, okay, God, you know, I need those mysteries, the revelation of the mysteries. Okay. So I, I'd like us to pray in the spirit for those of us who can pray in tongues, you know, just uh, between you and God. Okay. There's uh, absolutely no requirement to. Maybe, you know, uh, just loud enough for you to hear. Okay, so for you to hear your, your own voice, uh, you can just pray in the Spirit. And you can pray with the understanding also, right? So let's let's spend some time doing that. Maybe it's about your prayer life. Maybe it's about you know. Uh, maybe it's it's about it's about other things. Maybe you know uh, there, there are things, the choices to be made, and uh, we don't know what we should pray for, even as we ought to pray. But um, the Holy Spirit helps us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You know, he makes intercession for us. So uh, just like us to just pray strong, you know, pray fervently, uh, pray in the spirit, pray strong, pray fervently and just say, God, you know, I just need you, God. I just need you, God, you know, um, and, and just pray and knowing fully well that he's making that intercession. He's making that perfect prayer. Thank you. You know, we also saw that 
uh, Romans uh, eight twenty six. You know that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. So, you know, maybe the, there's a whole list. You know, you're saying, "Oh God, I have this big list of weaknesses. No problem. Just pray in the Holy Spirit. You know, He is there to help us in our weaknesses." Yes, Lord, we pray that you will just lead us, O oh Father God, into all that uh, you have actually, Lord, purchased for us, O oh Father God, that you will guide us into all truth, O oh Master. Yes, Lord, we just want to be strong in the inner man, O oh God. But as your word instructs, O oh God, to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, O oh God, that all of us will be strong in the inner man, O oh God, that we'll be mighty lord uh, in the inner man strong in the inner man by the by the power by the might of the holy spirit and lord we pray that we'll be strong and uh, receive the mysteries oh god that we will pray the mysteries understanding and revelation lord will come by the work of your holy spirit oh father god and we pray oh father god that uh, Lord, for those of us who need leading, oh, Father God, who need to make some important decisions, Father, that you will lead us, oh, Father God, even as we pray, oh, God. Yes, Master, we thank you that we have you, oh, God, with us all the time, 24-7, you are with us, Lord. And, Lord, we pray that we will grow in our understanding, that we will grow in our relationship, that we will grow in friendship, oh, God, that we will grow in intimacy with you, Father God. And all the time, Lord, I just pray that our heart will be tender towards your voice, oh, Father God. God, that we will not be, Lord, um, Lord, our conscience will not be seared, O oh God, because of unrighteousness or because of the work of the flesh, O oh Father God, that we will not indulge in it. But Lord, you've called us to walk in a higher realm, O oh Father God, spiritually and, uh, and a higher standard, O oh Father God. And Lord, may we walk in that, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We give you all the praise at this time and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you. Uh, online class. Uh, we'll meet you guys later. God bless. Bye-bye.